get a sense of where we are now. Um, so, this is a timeline. I appreciate that a lot of you can't. Richard, maybe you should move because otherwise I'll just be hovering my armpit. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, but it'll help me talk it through anyway. So, uh, as a sort of overall things. Um, no, let me go back to the beginning. So, basically, we first convened in November 2010, so actually. Um, more than 12 months ago. Um, and the reason uh, that happened was because the ATASH project was running a pilot project called uh, the Gear Up program that was focused on uh, taking unemployed young 18 and 19 year olds and placing them in green internships. That was going to be funded through the Future Jobs Fund and then that got cut. So it ended up being unpaid, but it was really oversubscribed and we put young people um, into placements in waste management and bike maintenance and eco fashion and green carpentry and furniture reuse and things. Um, and it was a great success. So at the same time as we were running that project, we started doing a bit of research about how could we uh, escalate this, how can we get more people involved, and we were especially looking to examples um, that had been going on in California where they'd experienced quite a lot of success, especially of um, placing young people and people from minority communities into green and decent jobs. So we convened in November 2010, and um, I've passed a few mission statements around the table, um, and it gives you a good uh, sort of snapshot view of who was at that first round table and who were the first organisations to really have that conversation. Um, so yeah, that's, that's uh, how we got together. Um, and since then, we've had quite a few sort of milestones, um, which I'll talk about in a second. But over this year, I think the sort of major areas that we've been working on, or our major goals, have been obviously partnership building, um, building the alliance, but also trying to create relationships, especially with employers, with job centres, with councils and colleges, to try and bring together all kinds of stakeholders to see how we can work together to really um, push this agenda and create opportunities. We've been designing our pilot project, which I'll talk about later. We've um, had a focus on policy as well, and we've done quite a lot of publicity and campaigning. We've inspired some new projects. Um, Stuart especially has been working on a project down in South London called the Greener Apprenticeship Partnership. Um, and there's projects coming out in the Midlands and in Kent as well. Um, and we've supported other uh, projects as well. We're a founding member of the London Green and Jobs Hub, uh, too. And uh, we've been developing resources and we've secured funding. So we've hit quite a lot of uh, different, different things that we've done this year. But maybe I'll take you on a bit of a sort of month by month timeline. So. In February 2011, so just under a year ago, we decided to um, call ourselves an alliance and we created a task force, um, <laughs> which was just a fun way of distributing some of the grunt work, really. Um, and with that came our, our sort of mission statement and our principles and things like that, um, which are always under review and, and can always be... Um, uh, flexible depending on, on new people who join the alliance, but that's the, so these are the building blocks that you have in front of you on what we're working with. Um, in April, a uh, few people from the alliance went on a green jobs learning exchange in San Francisco. Um, that was a really, really great opportunity to learn what's going on over there, um, learn some of the mistakes they've made as well as, as the successes, and really try to assess you know, how we can translate um, the projects that are going on over there to a UK context. Um, and it was there that we came across the Reefs of Success Environmental Literacy Curriculum that Tamsin is working on right now. In May, the London Greener Jobs Hub, which is convened by Capacity Global, was established as a result, really, of the learning exchange, which is really great. Um, in June and July, we contributed to an IPPR report that came out as a result of that exchange, too. We secured funding from uh, the Calusical Banking Foundation for phase one, which is um, for the design and delivery of our pilot project. Um, and we started getting invited to things, which was fun. And we spoke at a TEC event. Uh, we spoke at Glastonbury. <laughs> and uh, we spoke at another sort of anarcho Marxist event, which is <laughs> also really fun. Um, in August, uh, we were awarded uh, because we were a 
finalist in the She Never Kept Me um, Foundation, yeah, campaign of Environmental Campaigners Award for uh, the Alliance. Worked so far. We launched our website. We uh, established a great social media presence, and we started guest blogging for other websites too. So we have a guest blog on Ten Ten, um, which are NGA that sort of have lots and lots of member organisations that work to cut their carbon emissions by ten percent. We launched officially in September uh, and got a lot of interest around that too. Um, and then in October and November we started uh, thinking a bit more about policy. We um, put in a submission into uh, basically next this June um, there's a summit, Rio Plus 20, um, which is a UN uh, summit um, around sustainable development. Um, there's not much of a... The, the, the goals of that summit aren't necessarily um, set in stone, but that's why it's a great, they invited a lot of different organisations to submit what they wanted to see, um, and so we did a submission, and um, that has to be taken into account um, by the people who are setting the agenda. And we also um, had a lot of influence into another project called Global's Transition, which is around Rio, um, and there's a whole sort of paper around green jobs and skills um, which they've also submitted into the Rio process. We started adapting the Roots of Success curriculum for a UK classroom um, and if you have any questions about that or want to know more definitely ask me about it, we think it's going to be really good. Um, we also secured funding for phase two, woo, which is funding um, that sees us through to the end of 2012 um, and is for at the delivery of our pilot project this year. And then December and January, we've really been concentrating on building more partnerships and we want to develop some new ideas. We are starting to share what we're learning. Um, we've put a handbook online for people who want to set up their own green jobs training programs um, and we'll be sharing that round. Um, and we've been blogging for other websites including the New Economics Foundation about what we're learning and the barriers we're seeing too. <coughs> and then sort of going into the future, uh, you know, part of this next conversation after the break about new ideas will be really important for us um, and planning for the summer as well because during the summer uh, we want to be able to take what we're learning um, from the pilot project but from the other work as well and go around the UK to help other communities who are interested in taking on this agenda set up um, programmes of their own or also to learn from other communities as well that are doing great things that we might not know about and sort of bring that back to East London. Um, so that's what we'll be planning, starting to plan next month anyway. So any input that you want to have in that would be really fantastic. Because obviously the more people we hook up with, the better in that sense. Um, so I hope that gives you a bit of an overview of sort of what we're doing, um, who we are and, and what we've done so far and where we're going. Does anyone have any questions? I'd say next up Hannah's going to talk about the pilot project. So 